Hi guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel. So I had said in my previous video, um, I'm not sure which one it was, but I had mentioned that I had the brilliant idea of making um, nine glue books as Christmas presents. <laughs> And yes, I this Christmas, um, which is in 15 days, um, I'm I'm insane. I've lost it completely. <laughs> so anyway, that is my plan. And then guess what I went and did this morning? Um, I went and got a tetanus booster. So my left arm barely functions right now. <laughs> I tell you what, if I thought things through, um, I would probably think there was something wrong with me. Okay, so I thought I would go ahead and come on and um, do kind of a glue book start to finish kind of deal um, for you guys. So in case you, you know, have never seen one made or you don't know what they are at all, or you would just like to, you know, watch me make one. <laughs> um, you know, that was just my idea. So what a glue book is to me, um, and you know, it can be called, let's first just say that the terms that you hear for things are very, I, in my opinion, um, very flexible. Don't get caught up in, um, in terminology if you're a beginner, um, because I did and I, you know, it, it overwhelmed me incredibly um, when I was starting out. Don't get, you know, just don't get caught up in, in all the, the the terminology and and what different people call different things because we all, I think, have our own idea about um, what, you know, these things are because you've got junk journals and then you've got glue books and you've got smash books and you have art journals and you have all these different, you know, these different terms. And in my opinion, they can kind of all be called the same thing. So um, it's kind of interchangeable as far as I'm concerned for the most part. Um, but I'll tell you what I consider to be a glue book or a smash book. Um, and I learned the technique that I use from Gail Agostinelli. So um, I will try very hard to remember to link her video in the description box below, um, her videos, um, if you wanna go check those out. Um, but that's where I, you know, that's where I got my ideas for these. But basically what I consider to be a glue book is a larger book, um, that you gut. Okay. So we take all the pages out and then create a large spine for, um, I usually do three inches on my spines and you create signatures. I make three signatures for each one that have around about 20 pages or 20 sheets of paper per signature. So that ends up being, that ends up being, come on, I did math. <laughs> that ends up being 80 front and back sheets, yes, um, per signature and then you don't decorate them. They're, they're left blank. And for me, the papers that I use in my glue books are all like the fun scrapbook paper um, that I wouldn't use in a vintage journal. Um, I use calendar pages. I use brochures. I use junk mail. I use, you know, all that stuff that you collect as a paper crafter um, because you've become obsessed with not throwing away anything that might be usable, right? I don't think I'm the only one um, that you don't want to put into something else. <laughs> I put them into glue books um, because the idea of a glue book is that the person, the recipient is probably going to cover up most of the paper anyway. Um, so, I don't worry too much about it matching. I don't worry about, you know, any of that because it's probably gonna be covered up with something else. Um, maybe the recipient is going to um, cut pictures out of magazines and glue them in. Maybe the recipient is going to use this, you know, for collage. Um, maybe they're gonna draw in it. Maybe they're gonna doodle or, you know, sketch or 
the possibilities are absolutely endless. Um, and that's why I love them so much because they're not, they're not really a theme. I typically use um, children's books only because they're the usually the ones that are larger in size. But I do have a, I, I have a couple here that are like, well, maybe just this one. It's kind of like a, um, it's not necessarily a kid's book. It's more of like what I would call a coffee table book. Um, but things like, you know, those kinds of books, but they don't really have a theme and anyone can enjoy them because you could also cover the cover. You don't have to leave anything um, the way that it originally came, right? As the recipient. So I hope that helps to kind of explain um, at least my idea of a glue book or a smash book. I typically use the term glue book um, just because it was the first term I used, I heard in relation to this, but I know that some people do call them, you know, smash books. Um, okay. So I think that kind of covers the basics of, of what I'm trying to achieve here. So let me show you the nine books that I chose. Um, I just went through my book stash and pulled out books because these are all going to be for, well, okay, one of them is for an adult. Um, the rest of them are all for technically children, um, the oldest of which is 13. So, um, but the youngest of which is four. So I didn't really, I don't worry about it too much because even myself as an adult, I really like the images on children's books. I mean, they're, they're pretty and they're nice to look at. So I don't worry about too much about the recipient's age. It doesn't, that doesn't bother me. Um, anyway, okay, so let me just show you what I chose. And then I think in this first video, I'll show you how I um, gut a book and um, I'll cut it down and stuff and you know, that kind of thing and uh, we'll get started. Okay, I hope, I hope that this is interesting for you all. All right, so um, this is the this is one that I chose, and I think that it is. Well, I've already pulled pages out of it, as you can see, um, which is fine because I'm going to gut the whole thing anyway. This is from 1990, so it's just a children's book, basically all about bears. Um, but, you know, hence the title, Bears, Bears, Bears. You've got stories and songs and poems, and I will, I do always use pages from the book if I can in the glue book so that you know because that's fun all right so that's the first one and i'm going to put these on the floor next to me so they're out of the way as i go um we have babar's book of color i love the size of this book it's um you know it's nice and and tall and perfect um yeah for what i want to do this one is I feel like this one is older, but I'm not sure. 1984. Um, and again, I don't worry about that either too much. I just tend to have a lot of older books because I buy them, you know, used or um, at thrift stores and stuff. So that one. I have a copy of the Children's Book of Virtues. And this one is from 1995. But I just, again, I like the size of the cover and it's in pretty decent shape. Um, I have a book of favorite bedtime stories. And, you know, it's a little bit dinged up and I might be able to get, like, that's just some, like, leftover residue from a sticker. But I might be able to get that off. But if I can't, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. I don't worry about it too much. Um, like this one, I'm not sure. We'll have to, I'll have to work on that. But sometimes you can get them off if you just, um you know, work at it for a while. Depending on what the cover's made of, you can use different, um, you know, items, <laughs> things to try and get them off. You know, like sometimes I will use acetone, but not not usually on something like this. But I might try just um, a little, you know, like use a baby wipe and kind of scratch that off a little bit, but it's fine. It doesn't bother me. Because like I said, whoever, you know, the recipients can add stuff to the covers too. So we have this gorgeous, oh, I love these kitties. They're so cute. Little tigers in your house. Look at them. <laughs> so cute. 
And then this, this one that you already saw, this Cat Facts. This is a next, this is a very old book, I believe. Um, I got this at an estate sale. I love this book. Um, but you know, it's the cover is perfect for this. So let's see, 19, wait, 1926. So yeah, but it's the pages are really cool. And I just I love the cover. There's a little puppy. So yeah. Um, we have a Richard Scary book. <laughs> and then a large, large copy of The Velveteen Rabbit. And this is the biggest, I think this is the biggest one that I chose. I think it's um, just about 12 inches across. And, and I, I don't worry too much about the, the size of the inside pages um, because you can, I will show you, I'll show you how I do it. But anyway, so I love this book. It's actually like all of the page, pages are embossed in some way and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use uh, these pages are kind of weird they're like um, doubled up cardstock can you kind of let me see if I can show you like I can put my hand through <laughs> um, but I might be able to just open them up so that I don't know we'll see we will we will see I'm not sure if this is going to be the one I do on camera or not but um, anyway all right so that is that now let me decide I don't know if it really matters. I think I'll probably just kind of go back and forth while I'm um, making all of these and you might see different different books in different videos, but it'll be kind of the whole process if you're okay with that. Um, but I want to show you how I um, got a book and let's use one of the newer ones because well, we can do, we can do two. How about that? We'll do the newer book, this one, and the oldest of the ones that I have here. And gutting a book, it depends on what you're going, you know, what your end result is going to be. Okay, so since these are going to be glue books, and I'm, I don't care about the original spine, I'm, I'm not going to use that as the spine, I'm going to create a brand new one out of chipboard. Um, I don't, I'm not as careful <laughs> as I am if I want to keep the book actually intact. So that's something you need to keep in mind, um, you know, when you're doing this because, yeah, I'll show you as we go. All right, let's do the newer one first. Um, I need, I need, I need my, oops, my um, little, you know, utility knife. And I forgot to grab, well, I think it'll be fine. Okay, usually I would put a different mat under here. Let me just grab it real quick. I'm not 100% certain that this mat is like a self-healing, but I know that this one is. So just so that I, you know, don't make any, massive mistakes. Okay, so if you want to look here at where the pages are attached to the spine. Now, even though this is a newer book, they actually, I don't think they're actually attached to the spine. You can see, oops, sorry. You can see the signatures very, very distinctly. And then I don't think that the spine is actually attached to the pages. So this is going to be easier than I thought. So the first thing I do is I fold it this way and I just kind of work it back and forth where the, the pages and the covers kind of meet each other. Um, and this one really isn't going to be very difficult, so I don't have to do that too much. All right, so here's, the, here's our spine of the book. Here's our like signature block is what I'm going to call this huge, you know, all the pages together. And then you can see here, we have paper that attaches the signature block to the front and back covers, okay? And that's what we wanna cut. Now, if you were gonna try and salvage this entire cover with the spine, you would wanna be, you know, super careful when doing this um, that you don't cut through 
too far and into your spine. I've done that before where my knife will actually come through here. Um, so, but for these purposes, I just wanna make sure that I don't, you know, cut the cover, which is fairly simple. So I just put my craft knife right here along that signature block and I just slide it down. There we go. And I actually, even though I wasn't being very careful, I don't think I ended up going through it. But this is where I've gone through before because if you put your knife too far in, you can cut right through that um, section that's right between the two pieces of board. All right, so we have that side off. And then the second side is always easier because you can move this whole piece out of the way. See how we've got that a lot of paper here. So same thing, just, and I stay closer to the signature block than the cover because you can trim off your excess later. Okay, so there's our pages and I will put those aside. So we'll use those and now we are left with this as you know our cover so let me show you on this side now i don't want any of the original spine or any of this like i don't know what you call it the 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 non-board part <laughs> of the book you can feel it so you've got the the covers and then a little bit of a depression and then you've got your spine piece so i will cut right along here and there are two ways that you can do that and I'll show you in a second but let's go ahead and gut the older book here and I do want to be careful um, because this is gorgeous and I don't want to damage I want to leave this obviously and I want to save this piece as much as possible um, but we're just going to do the same thing. And this one I know is because it's old. Whoops. I had already taken some pages out of this one too. Let me set those aside. Um, because this, you know, it's, it's old. Oops. Sorry. You can tell for sure that our signature block is not attached to our spine, right? But we're gonna still just be sort of careful here. Um, why is this such a weird angle? I think I did it differently before. Let me turn it this way. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to uh, carefully put my knife in here. And then I will just kind of check that I'm, you know, kind of in the right spot. If you can't tell, um, you can just kind of look and see, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going the right way here. And you can, you know, kind of pull it and work with it a little bit. Like I said, if you wanted to save the spine, you would want to make sure that you were taking a lot more care. But for this purpose, I'm not. So I'm not too worried. I was really stuck on there. I didn't expect it to be that difficult. There we go. Oh, I think because I was trying to cut into the signature block, that's why. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I still didn't cut through. Yay me. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> See, when I don't care is when I don't go through it. If I cared, I would have gone right through. All right. So now we have, um, there we go. All right. So I'm just going to carefully There we go. Okay. So we have our signature block 
And we'll set that aside. And we have our cover. Oh, see, yep, I did cut through. See that? <laughs> That's what you want to avoid if you're trying to save the whole book cover, okay? But I don't care because I'm going to cut that off anyway, so it's not a problem for me. Um, another time I will do a video showing you how to be more careful when, um, <laughs> you know, when cutting off your covers uh, or cutting, cutting out your signature block. Okay, but for this purpose, this was fine. Okay, let me move this out of the way. And bring in my super large cutter. And hopefully this will all fit in the frame nicely. Okay, so if you don't have, we'll do it, we'll do it both ways. All right. We'll do it both ways. If you have a, a trimmer that can cut through heavy material, then that's like, that's my favorite way to do it because it's so easy. Um, if you don't, I'll show you how you can do it um, a different way. But this cutter is amazing. And I have it linked in the description box below if you're interested because this will cut through um, pretty decently thick material. Um, I think I'm actually going to do it so I can see. Is that how I want to do it? All right. So all I do is line up. No, <laughs> sorry. I always, I don't know. There's, I always do it differently because it depends on the book and how well you can see what you're doing. Okay, so I line up the very edge of the cover book board, okay? And you can, you can feel it when you're actually, when you're doing it. And I make sure everything is square, okay? And then I just wanna hold this down. And hopefully this doesn't prove me a liar today. And it'll go through. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we have this cleaner edge. It's not perfect and I can run it through again because I didn't get close enough. Can you see? There's still um, quite a bit of um, extra paper there, but I can get closer to it and I will. But this is just, you know, I'm just getting it taken apart first here. Oh. I work better pushing than pulling. I'm sure everybody has their own um, technique when it comes to these, but all right, make sure. All right. Okay, and I'm just gonna throw this away because I'm not gonna use that. All right, so now this one is, this one's better. Can you see how close I got? to the book board there. It's nice and straight and um, yeah, perfect, honestly. Um, I couldn't have done much better. I'm really happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is measure this so that I make sure that the other one is, is exactly the same. So we have, looks like right between, of course, um, eight and three eighths and eight and a half. And I wonder if I could just trim it to eight and three eighths. Let's see. Nope, going the wrong way. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Is that weird? Does anyone else have like a preferred um, way to use this machine? <laughs> I, I can't, when I'm doing thick materials, pulling it, I can't do, but I can push it fairly easily. go all right and then this will this should just come off um if not you can do it again Oop. you can turn it this way <laughs> oh all right
There, perfect. Okay, so that is just perfect. I'm very, very happy with that. And you're not gonna see this edge anyway because you know we're gonna attach the spine. It's not even gonna show. All right, so now we want this one to be eight and three eighths as well. And we'll flip it over. I'm sorry, my whole desk is probably shaking as I do this. Great. That doesn't seem right at all. <laughs> Just make sure. Okay. Why is that not? Hold on. Eight and three eighths, right? That's what I said. Why is this one? This one seems wider. That's weird. Okay. I think we did okay. Like I said, this is gonna, you're not gonna see this edge anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. And I can trim that with my scissors a little bit too. Just like that. So if you have excess, just, you can just trim it off, but honestly, it's not gonna be a problem. So then we'll just double check. Let me get this out of the way. Whew, that was messy. The older the book, usually, the more mess you're gonna create with your cutter. Okay. Let's get that out of the way here. All right, so I just wanna make sure that they are indeed the same size and they are. So I am happy with that. They line up perfectly. It looks like we have a nice straight edge. So I'm, I'm happy, that's ready to go. All right, now, if you don't have the cutter that will cut through, um, you know, thick material, you can do it this way. All right, you'll need a cutting mat okay um of some sort and meet our book i'm gonna do it this way yeah i'm gonna do it this way because i want to be able to see my lines so i make sure i get it straight i just need to grab one thing Um, I have this tool from We Are Memory Keepers. It's got a, a metal um, edge on one side and it has a handle so you don't cut your fingers, but you can use any metal ruler um, that you have. And you'll need some sort of um, rotary tool. That's, I mean, I find that to be easier than a craft knife, but you could probably do it with a craft knife if that's what you have. So don't, don't worry too much if that's, you know, if that's what you have. Um, so what I'm doing here is I am lining up, I'm gonna have to stand, I think. I'm just lining up my book, top of the book here, um, with a line, it doesn't matter which one, on my cutting mat. And then I am gonna put my um, ruler. Let's see, let's move it over here. I'm just trying to line it up so that I make sure I get it square, if that makes sense. So I'm lining the top of the book up with a horizontal line, and then I'm using a vertical line um, along the edge where I want to cut so that I can put my ruler here whatever I'm whatever straight edge I'm using and I know that it is uh, it is straight like so okay 
and then keep your hands out of the way. Hopefully this works because the tetanus shot was in my left arm and I might not have as much strength as I think I do. But you just want to hold it down tight and you don't, you know, if you can't go through in one cut, just keep going back and forth until it comes off. Oops. There we go. All right. So we have a straight edge there. Pretty nice. All right. And then we're just going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other I will say there is a little more room for error doing it this way just because of the fact that you don't have something to square it up against. Um, but I haven't found a situation yet that I wasn't able to recover from. <laughs> so if you, you know, if you make an error and you're not happy, you know, with how it looks, um, there's usually, there's usually a solution. Okay. And again, this is going to be covered, so I'm not terribly worried about this excess here, but you can always come in with a, you know, a pair, of, a smaller pair of scissors and just kind of trim that, trim that off if you don't like it there. messy process but it's okay all right so let's just check that we are fairly even and we are I'm happy with that everything lines up pretty nice all right so we're ready to go we have two of our nine covers <laughs> ready for spines uh let's see where are we we're at 30 33 minutes okay so I'm gonna stop the video and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of my um, covers off of my signature blocks or the other way around. And, um, and then I will be back and I'm not sure what we'll do next. I might um, show you how I do spines, that might be next. So yeah, thanks for stopping by today, guys. I hope that you found this interesting and helpful. Um, please give it a thumbs up if you would, if you did enjoy it, because that really does help, really does help, um, our channels to grow. And, um, I know it sounds silly, but it, it really does. <laughs> and if you aren't already, please subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss any, any more, um, parts of this series if you're interested in it. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments for me and I'll try to help you. Okay. All right, guys, I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.